Them. Israel has stepped up its attacks on Palestinian militants in Gaza, ignoring calls for a de-escalation of the conflict. The number of Palestinians killed has now risen to 119, including 31 children. The Israeli army said operations overnight were designed to destroy a network of tunnels used by Palestinian militants. It said it wasn't feasible to warn civilians, as it had done before strikes on Gaza tower blocks earlier in the week. Tanks and artillery have now joined ground troops on the border and fears of an Israeli incursion have prompted Palestinian families living near the border to flee. Palestinian militant groups fired more rockets into Israel overnight. More than 1,800 have been launched since Monday. Nine Israelis have been killed. Now, all of this as Israel suffers an unprecedented wave of violence in which both Arabs and Jews have been beaten and police stations attacked in towns and cities inside Israel. Overnight, there were more than 100 arrests. I'm joined now by... BBC Monitoring's Joel Greenberg, who is in Jerusalem. Joel, uh, what is happening on the Gaza border seems to be a massing of Israeli force. Is it clear what the intention is? No, I think it's far from clear, because if we judge this from previous rounds of conflicts of this nature, the Israelis have often moved from airstrikes to preparations for a ground move, and they have gone in in some of the previous rounds of this conflict. But this has also meant, it seems in the past it's been done this way, to bring more pressure to bear on Hamas in diplomatic contexts that may be developing to having a ceasefire. In other words, by threatening a ground incursion, you increase the pressure on the other side. So no question that a ground entry is possible, but it has to be seen in the context of the quiet diplomacy that we're hearing less about. Yeah, I want to ask you about the diplomacy. We understand the U.S. envoy is now engaged, and we saw the U.N. Secretary General uh, demand an urgent de-escalation. Is any of the diplomacy at the moment making any difference? There's no evidence right now that it's made any progress, and the Israelis are certainly projecting that they want to continue their operation and expand it, including the massing of forces, and there certainly could be a plan to go in. But this would be a very risky undertaking for the military. It would increase casualties on both sides and complicate the Israeli operation. It's, that's been the pattern in the past. So it's a very serious decision to take. Not sure that the Israelis are there yet. And I think it's also a race against diplomacy or the contacts that are going on to see if something can be worked out. But we haven't seen any public indication of progress or any real movement in the diplomatic context. Right. Now, Joel, as you've just indicated in your answers, there is a somewhat familiar pattern to what's happening in Gaza. But what is new right now is the degree to which there is now unrest in towns and cities across Israel, unrest between Arab and Jew, straightforward sectarian violence, Jew on Arab, Arab on Jew. How much is that concerning the Israeli government and could it become a factor in what happens next? I think it's of great concern to the government. The Prime Minister Netanyahu made a point yesterday of going down to a border police unit and having his picture taken or having video dis uh, various videos of him with the soldiers to show that he wants to crack down hard, bring in the border police and restore order. It's a great challenge for the Prime Minister. Also, the continuing conflict is inflaming passions in Israel. So may, that may also militate against continuing this for too long because it's having an inflammatory effect inside the country. So, so this could also be a factor in the decision-making in Israel. But clearly the message the prime minister is trying to convey right now is we're going to get this under control. And there have been arrests reported, but still last night was not a quiet night, not as bad as the previous ones, but certainly ongoing. And so this is continuing to be a problem for the prime minister. And, he, and it's, as you said, unusual for this to happen during an external conflict with the Gaza Strip. Final quick one, Joel. Prime Minister Netanyahu, who's on borrowed time, or at least that's what we assumed, uh, Yair Lapid, the leader of the opposition, is trying to form a government. Does Netanyahu's position get strengthened by what is happening? And does he therefore, in a political sense, have a vested interest in keeping this conflict going right now? Yeah, I think that's a bit of a leap, but definitely in terms of the results, this has worked in his favor. 
His opponents were about to close a deal on an, 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 a, a government without him, which would have unseated him. And as a re, but as a result of the con, uh, constant fighting or what's going on right now, a key right-wing politician, Naftali Bennett, has pulled out of negotiations with the anti-Netanyahu coalition and seems to be leaning to go back to a coalition with Netanyahu. Still not enough for a majority, but a great boost for Netanyahu because it undoes the plans of his opponents. So, it, yes, it has definitely benefited the prime minister to ascribe motives to him. That's a stretch. You have to have more evidence, I think, of that before you make that assertion. Joel, thank you very much indeed for giving us the latest. Now, as the heavy exchange of fire has continued between Israel and Palestinian militants in Gaza, violence has, as I've just discussed with Joel, spread amongst those mixed communities of Jews and Arabs inside Israel. Some of the worst sectarian violence has been in the city of Lod, near Tel Aviv. Our Middle East correspondent, Yolan Nell, has been meeting some of those affected. Israel is facing war, not just with Gaza, but between its own people. Here in Lod, mobs of Arab and Jewish Israelis attacking property, passers-by and places of worship. Volunteers are repairing a Jewish religious school that was set alight. People who live nearby are in shock. I would never, ever think something like this can happen. I wouldn't raise my kids in a place that I think something like this can happen. Um, I have Arab neighbors. We're not their best friends, uh, but we're far away from being enemies. We're saying Edelstein, are we? A state of emergency was declared here and a nighttime curfew imposed. There are scenes like this all over town. It looks like a war zone with the burnt out cars, scorched buildings, curbstones that have been ripped up. There are lots and lots of police around, and everyone still feels really on edge. In Lud's old city, Arab Israelis don't trust the security forces to protect them. People here complain they're treated like second-class citizens. Tensions grew with recent events in Jerusalem. The locals were angry because many years of frustration and discrimination and the end, uh, the end point was the attack on Al-Aqsa Mosque is that is the holiest place for the Muslims. We want to protest. They attack us. Israel hasn't seen such widespread unrest in its cities for decades. What's happening didn't just begin this week, and it won't end when the latest fighting with Gaza does. Yolantanel, BBC News, Lod.